one of the most original spirits of our time, Buckminster Fuller, sings of man's potency. Everyone aware of his work agrees that Buckminster Fuller is one of the original minds of our time. I was born in the era of the specialist, and I set about to be purposefully comprehensive, just the opposite. And I made up my mind that you don't just find out something to entertain yourself, you must find out things in order to be able to turn everything, not just in a philosophical statement, but into actually tools. I must reorganize the environment of man, by which then greater numbers of men can prosper. That's been my main undertaking. We, we can turn this tape, there's no problem. There's so many questions to ask you, Mr. Fuller. You call me Bucky. Bucky! I was married in, in World War I. Our first child was born, and she caught the spinal meningitis and infantile paralysis. It was an awful struggle where the child lived to just before her fourth birthday, and she died in uh, November 1922. So for five years, I was feeling really horribly sad about this kid. I, f I felt that uh, if the kind of technology that went into making a battleship and an airplane and guns had gone into, I'm sure this child had caught these things out of the environment, and I was sure that there's something wrong about our environment. In the Navy, I learned how to navigate. I used mathematics very powerfully. I learned how to calculate. I was sure things were just not being done in logical ways. In 1927, our second child was born. At that time, I had a, suddenly a new child after five years uh, going out that little girl we loved so much. I said, I, I've got a chance now to look out for this new life and I'm going to have to really rethink everything I have. I had absolutely no money, and suddenly there's no child, and everybody tells you you got to earn a living. I said, I think this is an absolute blinding thing. I'm either going to say you go out to make money or you're going to make sense. I recall in Chicago wheeling my little child in her baby carriage in Lincoln Park. I was amazed because a little biplane went over Lincoln Park. Airplanes were not very common in those days. I said, isn't it amazing? Here's my child looking up at that airplane, and that airplane in the sky is as natural to her as a bird, because when I was born, the airplane did not exist. It, it was really the, sort of the beginning of impossible things happening. I began to feel for what really needs to be done in the very biggest way. Well, I found that I, I couldn't improve an airplane very much. I'm not going to improve the electronics very much. There are very many pe people preoccupied with that where man was living, he was really very ignorant. It's where people live that need attention. And I saw that the, the way in which we built was very, very ignorant. <laughs> when you build a boat, it's got to float. <laughs> so you learn to do a whole lot with little. It's got to be strong enough not to sink. It's got to carry a cargo. The world of building on the land was very different from the sea and the sky. So I saw, why was the difference? Because man used to build fortresses. And the heavier and higher, the thicker the walls, the more secure it felt. Some people think of a house as a fortress, yes, rather than yes. a place to live. So I'm going to see what happens if I will take the kind of technology that's gone on the sea and the sky and apply it over to the land. So many things to ask you, Bucky, that you have foreseen. I'm thinking of your geodesic dome. Do you see actually roofed cities ever? Uh, we're continually doing more with less, and my geodesic domes do a very great deal with very little. But I think they're only symptomatic studs, and I wouldn't be surprised if we found ways to control that environment over the city without even seeing the roof there, that an electrical field control, and so we could make the water go and dump over here and pipe it there and so forth, whatever it might be. It seems that uh, Buckminster Fuller speaks outrageously, and yet you've come up with so many outrageous explanations that turn out to be right and accurate and true and practical. Time and again I am asked, who else do you know who thinks the way you do or does what you do? And I find it very strange to have to answer, I don't know anybody else, simply because I really did choose a very different grand strategy, and not because I think that I have capabilities other human beings don't have. My daughter, who was, I was wheeling the baby carriage, who had an airplane as normal in her sky, now has her daughter. And that daughter was born in New York. And they, it was right in the flight path for the flights out of LaGuardia and Idlewild. And this little child then, in her crib, <laughs> would hear this, this airplane go. And so she saw many thousands of airplanes before she ever saw a bird. 
And I saw the children's books that were sent to her, which were the same kind of children's books that were sent to me when I was a child. So they were farmyard, there was the barn and all the nice natural things that a child would see, the horse and the pig and the cow and the goat, sheep, rooster. Uh, my granddaughter <laughs> in New York City uh, looked out the window and saw those airplanes and she saw the automobiles going by by the millions. But when they gave her this, this farm book, she'd never seen a sheep or a cow or thing. And as if, as if you gave her these imaginary pictures of dragons and things. And she was very accommodated, right? She laughed about it, they were very amusing. <laughs> but they weren't natural to her. Mm -hmm.